Let us gather and wonder. Let us be found in the waiting. Let us pause, hesitate and reflect. In the waiting, we worship. In the not yet, we meet an expectant God. In the pausing, we find a pregnant place of possibility, of potential, of hope. Between the beginning and the end, in the middle of life, we meet love, truth, promise. In the everyday, we meet God. Hello, I'm Rory Hamilton, the Minister of New Kilpatrick Parish, and thank you as always for inviting us into your home or, or wherever you are watching this, that we might shape a, a time together in worship. It strikes me that there are a lot of possible outcomes when we meet together. We bring much and, and possibly expect much, but the true worship is the encounter that leaves us with. Maybe it sets us on an entirely different track from the one we started out on or expected. That new place of engagement and adventure is our worship. Holy One, sacred space and loving presence, may we find ourselves entangled in your being, that essence of life that renews us and forgives us and invites us into the next moment, resurrected, breathing with new life and hope. May we find each moment is such a gift, a new breath filled with possibility, yet to be formed hopes, yet sacred and God-given. Even the silences are yours, waiting for a new music, a, a word that can shape what is still waiting to be, inviting the dreams of the kingdom to come alive, 
flow into time and place now and still to be. Holy One, may we know the future is held in each moment, the, the, the between places, the not yet. And we are love's disciples, quickening, readying, hoping into tomorrow. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before we pick up the story today, let's go back a wee bit and remind ourselves of what's been happening so far. The king is a Persian and has a wife called Queen Vashti, but Vashti refuses to parade herself in front of the king's guests, wearing only her crown. She is therefore decrowned, and the king searches for another queen. Esther, a Jew, but she keeps that secret, after what is a beauty contest in all but name, is crowned queen. Mordecai, Esther's adopted father, really her uncle, is also seen in the king's gate. But then Haman, a Persian in the king's court, an enemy of the Jew, rises to power and he wants everyone to bow to the king. And Mordecai refuses, revealing that he is a Jew. Haman plans then to destroy all the Jews on the 13th day of the 12th month. The king is persuaded that this is a good idea, not knowing the real reason. But Mordecai urges Esther to plead with the king to save the Jews. Esther therefore faces a crisis. Will she put her life at risk or will she keep her identity a secret? Esther chooses to reveal her secret. So she fasts for three days, then decides the time has come. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner courts of the king's palace opposite the king's hall. The king was sitting on his throne inside the palace opposite the entrance to the palace. As soon as the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, she won his favour and he held out to her the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther approached and touched the top of the scepter. The king said to her, What is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given you even to the half of my kingdom. Then Esther said, If it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come today to a banquet that I have prepared for the king. Then the king said, Bring Haman quickly so that we may do as Esther desires. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. Magpie Murders, Happy Valley are two series where I've had to binge on them, seeing them back to back, because I always want to know what happens next. There's a tension and a, an excitement, almost sitting on the edge of your seat excitement, wondering how these stories will conclude. There have been a few series where I've actually had to skip to the end because the tension is actually just too much. You know, I, I need to know. Line of Duty was one. Um, I watched the last bit in order to cope with the rest of it. I didn't have enough blood pressure tablets otherwise. I have a friend who always reads the last page of a book before the first. She then knows what happens and she doesn't need to, to worry about it. It's either going to be a good or a bad outcome, but she already knows. The Bible doesn't have many stories like that, long stories. You don't read all at one go. 
We've got Moses and Abraham stories, which are long, even the Jesus story, but all of these are made up of we stories, each with a beginning and a middle and an end. And they're all joined together, the bulrushes or the 10 plagues. And we do all three in each of these one individual stories in a Sunday morning, rather than the whole story. I can think of two Bible stories, however, that are much longer. One is Joseph and the other is Esther. And this week we are in the middle of Esther. Everything has started, nothing has concluded. We have to sit in the middle of the story. Maybe we want to skip to the end, or like me, you can't stand the tension in the middle and want a quick conclusion. But perhaps there is a chance to pause and reflect, not only on Esther's story, but the reality that this is the experience of the bulk of our lives. We experience it as the moments between the expectations of beginnings and the drama of endings. Most Sundays, we tell a story and we conclude it, moving on to the next one the following week. But this isn't, or that isn't, the reality of our lives or our faith. We live between times. We live almost in the mundane, wondering where God is. What is the meaning of this moment? How is love guiding us here in the unfinished? There's a whole branch of faith called process theology, which is the idea that God is in the moment. God isn't one for looking on from a distance, directing the traffic, but is involved in each moment, moments that have still to be worked out, that nothing is planned. Nothing is taken for granted. God, love, justice are all working towards a conclusion that hasn't yet arrived. Everything is in flux. The conclusion hasn't yet been reached. Even God doesn't know how each moment will turn out. It's all to play for, living in the unfinished, in the middle. You can have us sitting on the edge of our seats. We make a difference. We are co-creators with God of the next moment. God is working in and through the world, not sitting apart from it, checking the predestined plan is working out nicely. Now that won't be everyone's view, however. Many will prefer believing God is in charge, that there is some plan. God has already arranged and, 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 and what is good will win. But others might see the middle of the story in a different way, as the reality in which we meet a living God engaged with our actions, our responses, our creativity, because they all count as we work together and live towards the next moment and the next and the next, shaping the world towards the shape of the kingdom, faithfully living and loving and recreating the next moment with God. Living in the middle of things. It certainly has me sitting on the edge of my seat because I can't turn to the last page to find out what happens. For, as yet, it hasn't. Dare we believe, every moment counts. Even these middle ones in the everyday, the not yet, where God is alive and is encountered, shaping, evolving, trusting, expanding. Every mundane, moment. Thank you for your company as always so inviting us into your company and um, we have various things happening in may and um, we have the coronation uh, next weekend and so we're having a special service for that in the church and um, where you're invited to wear your hats and, and there's a picnic afterwards in the man's garden here and there'll be lots of activities garden games there'll be royal um, scrabble there'll be a cake competition and if you'd like to be part of that you can create your own cake design it create it 
taste it, etc. So bring it along and we'll have a cake competition and there'll be a, 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 a diamond treasure hunt and various other things going on in the, the garden here just to celebrate as being a community and sharing these moments together. So you're very welcome to come along to that. And the video will have some recognition of that as well. So that'll all be happening next week. The bulletin is out as well and um, all the activities are there listed. So we've got Christian Aid um, coming up as we always do in May and we support that uh, generously. And thank you for that. So there's a, a walk going on next weekend and we hope that you'll be able to help with that. The, the information is in the bulletin about how we can sponsor or donate to Christian Aid. This is our main Christian Aid month in supporting that organisation. And various other activities as well, all listed there on the front page of um, our website at nkchurch.org.uk. And there you can download the bulletin as well. So thank you for your, your, your company. Let's, let's draw together our thoughts and our concerns for the world in our prayer for others. Let us pray. Between the beginning and the end, we find ourselves in the world, between moments and possibilities. And so we pray for a different outcome. In Ukraine, Sudan, Yemen. For the moments that capture peace and set it free, where there has been too much destruction and pain. In Myanmar and Syria, for the moments that free the oppressed and change the ways of frightened leaders, and life is renewed and filled again with good things. In the places of hunger, for the moments that someone speaks justice and love to the hungry. In the places of refuge, for the moments that an invitation is given that invites safety, compassion, and a journeying together into the future. For all the between moments, the not yets of the world, the things that aren't inevitable, for these we pray. And the between moments for our families and friends, the possibilities that surround them, the hopes and the tomorrows that speak of renewal, and those who are hurting, confused, cannot understand what life has thrown at them, cannot speak of it. We pray for a peace and a strength and a presence that loves them all through what all are going through. So be it. Amen.
go in peace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the common life of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>